Well, sure, man. I hear it's the rage. Everyone wants one. I think it's the no. I think the word is enrage. I think it's enraging <sighs> people. It's probably save that humor for the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the John G. Or Else podcast. I, of course, am who else but Tommy Else. And with me, as always, from Skokie, Illinois, the man on the beat, from johngsbeat.com, in an orange Aquaman t-shirt, Mr. Jonathan Orenthal Robleski. Oh, oh, that's a bad one. That, that's a, Orenthal is a bad one. <laughs> right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll uh, zip right past that. Um, oh, yeah, on. I'm wearing Aquaman because yesterday when we did Pinfalls, which will be released soon, um, you wore Spider-Man, which made no sense for a wrestling show. You should have wore a wrestling shirt for a wrestling show. Uh, being that this is a pop culture podcast, I, I answered in turn with the greatest superhero of all time, Aquaman. You, you didn't wear a wrestling shirt. You wore an everyday fan shirt. Yeah, because it's on their site. Okay, fine. Well, I mean, I only have so many wrestling shirts. What do you want me to do? I'm just saying now, today, you're Napoli attire. That's a very cool shirt. Well. The microphone's covering it. You might want to show it for everyone. No, I mean, the honest truth is just I, I'm out of clean clothes. This was the last thing left. There was everything's in the laundry. And well, the last the, time we thought you were washing your car with it. Well, I was going to say, even this is questionable. I just, it's, you know, I just got to wear this for, I'm not going to, I'm waiting until the laundry's done before I take a shower because I'm, I'm wearing this, this gross shirt right now. But it is a Franco original edition of the John G. Speed shirt available along with the John G. RL's podcast shirts. At ProWrestlingTees.com. This is all. This is all true. <laughs> yeah, I worked uh, all the nice plugs in there. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as we're talking about the shirt, uh, I was going to bring something up in regards to it as we have um, promised a shirt to uh, our winner of our contest, Kristen. Uh, and uh, I thought before we get before she gets her shirt, I want to give her one last option. Oh, come on. I'm going to give her one last option to choose and and see. Because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like she's just like, it's... she's Pandering? A she's a, no, she's a charitable person. And I think she's just trying to, you know, do something nice and, you know, maybe get a, a John G shirt or something like that. But I have an alternative. Uh, I have an alternative uh, option here. So you can take the t-shirt or you, Kristen, could have a mint condition still in the wrapper 2004 DVD edition of Weapon of Mass Destruction, The Murderous Reign of Saddam Hussein. It's still in the wrapper. It has never been opened. Um, I, I don't even want to know why you have that. It's topical. It's, it's uh, topical. It's relatable. Um, uh, re it says right here, if I can, uh, receiving a standing ovation at the Liberty Film Festival in October of 2004, Weapon of Mass Destruction, The Murderous Reign of Saddam Hussein, offers a balanced view of the real Iraq before, during, and following the military involvement of the United States and its allies. WMD is an objective report for the world to consider prior to making final judgment as to, question, as to the question, should America and its coalition have gone to war against Saddam Hussein or not? I mean, it's that it's on, and this is also, I might mention, unrated. So, well, look, look. So, well, Kristen, you have a choice. The t shirt. She was not prompted. She, she posted that on her own. She the mentioned DVD. the John G shirt. Nobody pushed her. And now you're trying to push her away from the John G shirt, which I I'm think is a I'm trying to give her a better option. I'm trying to give her a better option. I'm trying to give her a better option. Better option? A, a, an outdated. The DVD that you've never watched and don't care for. 
it's a collector's item. So this thing, the shirt. they said it was a, they got, it got a standing ovation at the Liberty Film Festival. So does Festival. the shirt. I mean, you know, your shirt's never been to the Liberty Film Festival. And that is My a very shirt has been to New York highly, a highly esteemed film festival. I mean, so I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing that out there. But all that aside, uh, we got some catching up to do. It's been a while since we've had a show where it's just the I think we should just us. So we uh, it's it's kind of been a couple of weeks now, but we it's still worth uh, uh, telling the story. Uh, we we uh, did go out and saw Al Snow and David Box Mullen uh, perform. Uh, their comedy show we had them on a previous episode when they were gearing up to get out on the road uh and uh we we told them that we had full intentions on coming out and we did and uh first of all great show Amazing uh, night. Yeah. we had a really a really a really fun time al was great david was funny uh but uh but there was well, little... let's, let's also mention uh, lee harden and elidar sky the two other comedians yes yes uh there was uh four people total and uh but uh where uh john and i got there uh and we were uh kind of hanging around with al and and david and uh al's uh, wife al's wife and Jessica, stuff and who turned uh, heel on me and uh well that's you know inevitable uh <laughs> but we're standing there and i look over and who had walked in the door but none other than miss lisa aprati who we mentioned yes our minds were blown uh we mentioned on the show with uh al if you hadn't heard it um back in the uh late 90s early 2000s she had a cable access uh, show um, where uh, it's very similar to kind of what you do, you know, kind of Chicago land type things that she would cover, you know, and it was called channel surfing with Lisa. Uh, but she herself is actually a legitimate pro wrestling fan. And um, so when the WWE would come to town, they, uh, she was able to get some people on, uh, but she had nobody on more than Al Snow. So when Al was on the show, I had asked him about, you know, how that all came to be and, and, and everything. And I think he was real happy to, to talk about it and to remember that and everything. And then you had sent out, uh, the show to Lisa Prati. You had actually, uh, hunted her down and sent it to her and, uh, she liked it. She was very excited about it. And that just made both of us really happy. And that on its own was, was huge. And, uh, you know, we had talked about potentially maybe having Al come back on the uh, the show at some point, and then maybe have her pop in as a surprise. Yeah, we were we were looking forward to doing a a, a Zoom reunion, so to speak. Right. But she won up to us. I don't know why we hadn't thought of it. To be honest, it was like as soon as I saw her, I was like, "Oh, well, why didn't we think of that?" You know. But yeah, there she we was. We're just so giddy that we got a response from her, and like, things look like we might have her on the show. Yeah. So she, uh, but she showed up and a couple, her and a couple friends, and uh, we sat with them throughout the whole the whole night. And all of them very delightful. It was good to get to know all of them. Very, very. She's very, very cool. We got to like see. She looks the same yeah yeah i mean and that's and, 20 some years ago yeah and to but to see her and al you know reunite you know was just and and we got a, a picture with them um which i'll have you place here in that the, picture in the is, will forever be one of the one of my favorite pictures of all time yeah just there's so many like weird things came together and weird worlds and weird times for for that moment i, I just the, the, that that picture just speaks volumes well for me that one of the things i love about it i mean aside from what you just said because i agree with all of that um it is just one of those things where it's so many the all, the, all the variables that had to come to together to make that moment happen and and we our our big problem was is we were sitting there just like buzzing over this whole thing <laughs> 
and there's not one damn person that either of us can think of that we could call or text who would have any level close to the appreciation for this as we do i mean it was just it was it was such a personal victory in some way in, in a way that it was just like i just i would have to do what we're doing now and explain the whole thing you know um yeah i mean there were people that i friends of mine who are familiar with the lisa lisa prati show there were friends of mine that are familiar with the al snow experience and david vox mullen and some maybe even know all three but putting them all together like somehow it didn't translate the excitement that we felt that night the right. giddiness that we felt just never came through clearly you know never like i told my sister they're all kind of oh well, that's cool but it just didn't translate somehow yeah yeah i mean you know you could say like hey look it's a picture of you know al snow and lisa prati together for the first time in you know 15 20 years or whatever it is it was and they'd be like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I'm like, no, <laughs> yeah. this is incredible. We're like, you know, like, this is great. We were high-fiving, man. Oh, man. Um, but uh, but the thing about that photo, though, is um, there's very few pictures I can look at where I will always remember how genuine my smile was in that, you know? Yeah. And that's one where I think all four of us are all legitimately beaming. And it's such a positive, like, I just, I see that and it takes me back to that moment. And yeah. I just was like, that's incredible. And I, I frame next to no photos in my place. You, you've seen, you've seen, I've got like a couple of things, but that's it. And uh, that's a, that's a very strong chance that that thing's going to go up in my place. I mean, I just it was a really awesome night we were talking about it all the way home you know and just uh and and again just it was fun to get to talk to her and get to uh know her as a person and you know and she told us some pretty cool stories uh one really wild one that i won't share but um it's uh yeah i mean and her friend and her friends were very uh lovely as well and and it was great to to get to meet them and you know everybody just had a, a good time and um they were also they were also very sweet they were so welcoming to us they they you know it wasn't like yeah you know nice to meet you they genuinely asked us questions about ourselves you know about the podcast yeah. they were just they're the three of the nicest women and, and it was just i mean we could go on and on all, all day about it it, it was just yeah. such a joyous occasion and it was and it was and again it, it's like you could have they could have just at the end of the night been like well you know uh, nice meeting you whatever and stuff but you know lisa was like you know we really want to you know wanted to keep in touch and everything and uh we actually did hear from her uh afterwards and um i won't get into any details but might be a chance we might uh we have not you, seen might, the you might be hearing from her too yeah, we might not have seen the last of Lisa Prati. So, um, but uh, I, I don't know that even us telling the story right now really, you know, can can paint the picture appropriately. But all, all I can say is, is that, you know, I, 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 like I said, I watched Al Snow and her and their chemistry they had, you know, years and years ago. And uh, they just always had so much fun with each other. And now that, I mean, I've spent time with both of them individually, uh, I can see how that, you know, they would play well off of each other. And her being just a genuine pro wrestling fan too, which I figured she had to be, you know, yeah. if, she, if she was incorporating. She knew her stuff well. But she knew her stuff, yeah. I mean, and she was talking about, like, going to the, you know, to the Rosemont and seeing the WWF and, you know, when, like, Hogan and Taker and, you know, like, those guys were going through. So, um, yeah, she was, and her, with her friends too, you know, and, and they, her friends were wrestling fans too. So, uh, yeah, yeah very cool it was a very very cool moment and awesome night and it was fun you know it was like that was a big part of it obviously but then you throw on top of it we're watching a comedy show with with dave david and, and al and, and everyone else and uh the uh the place we were at was actually pretty cool um the owner uh, i can't remember what his name was but he's on the man cow show um but he was a very 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 cool guy i mean he was just he you know made a point to tell everybody thank you for you know 
patronizing his establishment and that, you know, he appreciates everybody and, you know, and he works really hard and you could tell like the regulars there all love him and, yeah. and that they, uh, they appreciate him and they, the, I can tell that they, they see how hard he, he must work on that place and, and everything. So, you know, this is a real nice, positive environment and a, and a fun night. So it was deceptively large, like from the outside, it didn't look as big. No, but when it you got in there, it kind of sprawled of, out. Yeah. It was, and it's good food. Few, few big rooms. Yeah. I had a Buffalo burger. Uh, it was great. Uh, and, and I was, I was a little self-conscious about it because Buffalo burgers, I tend to make quite a mess with eating and I did not want to look like a complete slob in front of Lisa and her friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I were, I really was conservative about how I attacked that burger because otherwise I would have probably just been covered in ketchup and mustard and <laughs> looked well, like I, I have to say one more thing too. After um, after we posted that on one of the links, whatever we posted, um, one of my grade school friends, Mary, um, mm -hmm. she she commented and said that she lives right by there. And if she would have known, she would have come. Well, obviously, I didn't know she lived right by there. Sure. Um, but that I mean, the night was perfect as was. But if Mary would have popped in, like that would have been just like too many worlds colliding. Yeah, I've yeah. seen her like twice had, since high school graduation. We didn't go to the same high school, but still. Yeah. No, yeah, your head would explode. Yeah. <laughs> but a really nice, really nice woman, too. Um, what else you got? I have a question for you, actually, unless you, you have something more pressing. Uh, I, I've got plenty to talk about, but go ahead. Well, this kind of goes into the, uh, I'm going back a little bit. This goes into the uh, hot dog omelet, but not really. So my question is, um, you're in favor of, or you, you're open-minded to basically putting anything in an omelet, correct? Yeah, I think an omelet is, is, a, is a, okay. blank, a blank slate that you can fill with just about anything. Yeah. Okay, and I'm, I'm not going to argue. We've, we've gone through that before. Yeah. What, are, what is your stance on pizza toppings? Look, it's very similar. Uh, I don't think that there's anything that should be off limits. I certainly am not very adventurous in my pizza toppings. Um, there's things that I would prefer not to have on my pizza or, or, or have zero desire to try. Uh, but I would never uh, begrudge anybody if they like, you know, pineapple and sardines or, you know, so whatever. is it, it's also an open slate for you as well. Yeah. I mean, okay. well, I think, I think it should be an open slate for everybody. I right. Mean, okay. Just asking. Yeah. I just I'm wanted not, to know. It's like, I, it's like I said, you know, I don't, you, I'm not saying people, you know, have to have a hot dog omelet or that they even need to like it. I'm just saying you can't come to me and tell me that it's not allowed. That's, that's, that's not, that's not the American way. It's just not. I never said it wasn't allowed. I said it was that's not how we went out. No. Well, I don't want to go into the battle of the omelet. I was just asking right. you your stance on, on the well, I, I just, well, you know. As long as we're taking care of some old business, I also would like to, to, um, just say real quick that um, in regards to the uh, Freddie Boom Boom Washington comment, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, yes. you you attacked me and said that um, you know I was trying to come off like the you know uh, the the expert on on Welcome Back Hotter, and when I had explained what the Boom Boom and Freddie Boom Boom Washington was, I had said. It was because when he played the bass, it went boom, 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 boom. Now, you came back and corrected me and said that it's when he plays the air bass, which is true and is what I meant, but I had not specified that. But you came at me saying, well, you're the one who's saying you're the expert. And I never said the expert. I was an expert. And, and when I said it's when he plays the bass, you were like, you're right. And you did not contest it then. It was only after you saw an episode where. I, he, okay. In, in all fairness. You so all, right. I'm, all I'm saying wait, wait. Is, is, is that you, you attacked me for no good reason. No, there's always a good reason on, to attack On you. something I never claimed to have been. So. No, fair enough. You're, you're right. You never claimed to be a, a uh, welcome back counter expert. So I, I retract that statement. We'll go back and edit that out of the, the episode. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I see when you said that's how I got his name, 
right in my mind it clicked and i said yeah that's right because i wasn't an i'm not an expert on welcome back Connor. i just happened to be scrolling through the the, the uh, tv the other day and, and that episode came up because life is really weird sometimes mm -hmm. and and he's and there it was he goes no i just like to go boom 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 yeah he does so, the air base yeah yeah so we were both kind of right i might have even way. done it when i was saying it i don't remember i have to go back and look at the video but you know <laughs> a video replay yeah, let's call we, new york it's our yeah. get the instant replay yeah yeah we need a decision yeah well we'll get yeah we got to call the committee uh oh no, uh, no i'm screwed <laughs> i never see the win with that committee yeah yeah uh, somehow i think the committee is you and lily no no uh i will get uh to the committee in a few moments though um, oh no why do i feel like this episode is just gonna beat me up i gotta i gotta communicate from them um so uh this week uh i i, I don't know that this is breaking news or uh, but it certainly is uh, relatively new i believe it uh, this this came out in september uh, but uh, were you ever a, a Sesame? Where, where did Sesame Street land in your life? Because you're older than I am. I mean, I, I, I watched it. Yeah. I mean, like, like, were, how old were you when you were watching Sesame Street? Well, you know, like, I, I don't like seven, six. Okay. All right. Someone well, I mean, like, I mean, like, I was watching it from like, you know, one. So, I mean, like, oh I don't... yeah, I mean, I mean, it was started in the '60s. So, but I, I mean, it's been around forever, though. So, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, it's... I'm sure I watched it before I was seven. Maybe seven might be too old to watch Sesame Street. Maybe I have Electric Company by then. I watched or, Electric or Company. Freedom. I watched Electric Company too. Um, did uh, who was your? Uh, did you have a favorite on, on Sesame Street? You mean People or or Muppet? Uh, either or. Well, Muppet had to be Oscar. He was just cool. I, I'm going to go, believe it or not, I am also a very big Oscar fan. I will, I loved Oscar the Grouch. And the reason I, th I thought it was great that he lived in that garbage can and kept to himself, told everybody to go screw themselves. <laughs> yeah. like, he was kind of the he you know there he, he was kind of like labeled as a jerk and, and off-putting and everything but one of the things that i would love is sometimes like they'd go to the can and like knock on it and he'd open they and he'd come out you know, over the top of it and you'd hear like a party going on down there <laughs> yeah. or something like yes. that like he's got like all these people over and he's like wait i'm in the middle of something what are you doing you know and i just love that there was this whole world inside that garbage can or like led into some yeah. other world or something so i was a very very big fan of his um uh grover was a very uh big fa uh, fan favorite of mine as well um i i appreciated his meekness and his humility and uh i i, I liked i liked him a lot as far as the people i um i don't remember the names very well i remember lewis well there was bob Luis, maria who were married but not in real mr. life there was mr hooper mr hooper who passed away that was a tough one very sad episode yeah yeah that was that was uh honestly it was probably one of my first experiences with death was yeah probably was when mr hooper died um, no, I mean, I mean, you know, at least the original or the early years of the show, I thought all the all of the Muppets were cool. You had Oscar, Ernie, and Bert were, were just hilarious. Oh, Big Bert, Big Ernie Bert and Snuffleupagus. That yeah, was the cool. Snuffleupagus that nobody nobody could see except uh, Big Bird. It was his imaginary friend. Now they eventually saw him, right? Like uh, he was there was some reveal at some point. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I can't, I, mean, I can't say that I kept up with it that much, but, um, but yeah, nowadays I just feel lost in the whole thing. Like, well, now there's a million other characters. It was like, they, they, they stuck with a pretty steady roster until Elmo came along and then the, the floodgates opened up yeah. after that. And then they just started making anybody. And, and Elmo was a real tough transition because it was, it was, it, it did feel like a club that like, we didn't need any new members in, you know what I mean? And it <laughs> you was, know what it, it was the, it was the like Brady Bunch with cousin Oliver. Right. Right. It was like, we don't, you know, like we're doing fine here. We don't, you <laughs> yes. know, 
do we need a seventh kid? I mean, come on, really? I mean, it's like, yeah. Uh, Luis took over Hooper's store. That was still fine. There was no issues. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, yeah, they, they managed and everything. And uh, yeah, we're but, forgetting the uh, the African American couple, and I forget their name too. What wasn't there a? There was, they, and honestly, I think they were my favorite of the humans. Um, they were cool. Yeah, but I cannot. I mean, I just I. I had a hard time remembering their names even when I was a kid. So, yeah. but I remember Mr. Hooper very specifically because that was, shop. that was, yeah, yeah. And it was, yeah. And like everybody went through that place at some point or another. So, um, I bring all of this up because, uh, recently, uh, one of the, uh, uh, Muppets from Sesame street who, uh, the, their, their real name was actually revealed. And that is the Cookie Monster. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Well, I'm going to tell you. The Cookie Monster has always been referred to as the Cookie Monster. It's never been, it's never had a name. It's just a description of what he is. Now, I always felt great sympathy for the Cookie Monster because he had this insatiable urge (laughs) to eat cookies. And he couldn't, he just would lose his mind if he could get his hands on some cookies. But that guy would he'd stuff them all in his mouth and he'd try to chew them up, but he has no throat. So they just all fall out of his mouth. Well, but- so all he, all he ever gets to do is like taste it. And then it's like he's got to spit it. It's like somebody who can, who's like, you know, sips wine, swishes it around, and then spits it out so they don't get drunk. You know, it's but like. We didn't know he had no throat in, in the theory. It's he falling had. all over the place. There's cookies well, all over the place. Them like crazy. Theoretically, he had a throat. Well, you're, you're lifting the, you're opening the, the fourth wall. He had a throat in theory. I'm just saying that, you know, what I was looking at was a guy who just like, you know, was incapable of actually digesting. Well, in that case, at least he got to taste the cookie. Yeah, I know, but that's still. Think about this way, no calories. That's true. That's true. He never got bigger, you know, for the cookies. Yeah, the coolness of the thrill of tasting the cookie without the afterweight is perfect. I mean, he didn't have like the tightest physique in the world, but you know. Well, we didn't many, really see his entire body. Not many of them did, you know. Tolly, Tolly was kind of a bigger dude, and. Uh, well, you know, Bert was, you know, he was lanky. Well, Bert was lanky, but he wasn't, you know. Uh, well, no, uh, Ernie was kind of a little bit of a, a little bit of a stocky guy, but anyway, yeah, but the point is shape. <laughs> I mean, he could, you know, he could be rolling. Muppets forward. have their own. Um, I, you can't judge a Muppet's body. They, they have their own. They have their own physiques. But anyway, no, we're, so, the, we're, so the name was released. The oh, name yeah, was. I, a, I got a question after this, though. Go ahead. Okay, so the name was released, and uh, the general consensus on it is because uh, I guess he finally, in, in a recent episode or whatever, said, you know, everybody calls me the Cookie Monster, but nobody ever calls me by my real name. Apparently, his real name is Sid. Okay. Now, his last name is Monster. They said that his name is Sid Monster, but everybody just calls him the Cookie Monster. And he and I guess he was this this whole thing was to explain how what how and what nicknames are, you know, like how, what they are and how they work. So, he was like, "Well, you know, everybody calls me the Cookie Monster, but that's a nickname. My real name is Sid." And so I was like, "All right, I can live with Sid. He looks like he could be. He looks like he could be a Sid. It works. You know, I mean, as long as they're not going to call him Sid from now on, you know, yeah, then yeah, I, I'm, I don't want I'm, that. I'm okay with that. But I just found that I thought that was that was some interesting news. You know, what was your question you had there? Well, um, the other characters like Guy Smiley and and um, <laughs> they were on the show, but they didn't mix in with the other Muppets, right? I'm like trying to remember this. They had their own segments. Like they typically, they sliding. typically, yeah, they typically had uh, their own their own segments. Um, it was uh, it was not. Uh, they weren't usually like on the streets. Yeah, it was. Like you uh, wouldn't see guys smiling with Big Bird. Uh, no, not well. Guy Smiley was the talk show host, so I mean, you know, he was. Uh, you know, unless he was on the talk show, then no, probably not. Yeah, I was just trying to remember. I so, I was trying to remember if they interacted. I don't remember them doing so. And I don't remember there weren't any women Muppets back in the in the early days, right? 
Um, no. Uh, not on Sesame Street. I mean, like on the Muppet Show, you had yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there was like Miss Piggy and and stuff, but um, um, but yeah, that was uh, that was the extent of any female Muppet puppet people that I was aware of. So well, it is. That's interesting trivia on Sid. I like that. Yeah, I got a uh, before we went on the air today. uh, Oh no, messenger uh, from the committee stopped by. delivered a an envelope um inside were uh these three envelopes here um and uh they had a note they asked that i uh read these to you um, on the air um now just to kind of give you an idea of how in sync and in tune i am with the uh the committee i thought i would uh read these uh, Karnak style and uh, tell you oh, what's Karnak style, no, that's, a, that's a, a modern reference. Anybody over the age of 60 will get that one. I'm telling you, this show is very relevant and it's accessible and it's, it's you know, we're, we're, people will understand. They know what this is. So, um, so I'm going to read the contents of this envelope, just using my own intuition in my mind, and we'll see what what's inside. All right. So let's see here. First one. The popular club, the committee, and a woman. I know where this is going. Name three things John G will never be allowed inside. I saw that coming a mile away. So that's number one. Uh, let's see here. A buffoon, a leech, and an income poop. Just crying to a halt. There go, there go our readings. Name three words that describe John Robleski. All right, that was lame. That wasn't even funny. The first one, you know, was mildly amusing. That one was just bad. You better I, rebound on this third said, one. Who said any of this was meant to be funny? This is just, I'm just reading. This is this, this third one's better, better be a, a good one, or else I'm editing this whole piece out. All right, let's see here. Nothing, nothing, and something small once in a great while. What does John add to the show? Name three things John G contributes to the podcast. There you go. Very good. See, maybe you know the committee better than you thought. Um, Yeah. So that was, uh, they just, I guess, wanted me to uh, kind of give you the, the state of the union there, state of the podcast. Uh, Wait, wasn't the committee just congratulating me on stated. something the other day? You were telling me? Uh, yeah, but, you know, uh, things change at a rapid pace uh, and uh, <laughs> opinions, you know, shift. So just thought... Uh, you know, I, I look, I wasn't planning on this. I got a, I got a, you know, knock at the door. The messenger was there and, uh, you know, I do what I'm, I do what I'm told when the committee comes, I did want to say in your defense, I did want to thank you. I did want to say thank you for your very generous words, uh, that you spoke about me on Halloween. Um, you took to YouTube and went on and thanked me appropriately and um you know if anybody didn't see it definitely check out our youtube channel the john g Wells podcast and uh john really put out a really nice endearing um video he knows halloween's one of my favorite holidays and he just kind of took a 
you know, advantage of the, the opportunity to, to let me know, you know, that he's uh, grateful for everything that I've done for his life and gotten him where lies, he Lies, lies, more lies. But, but thank you again, though, John. Appreciate it. So, again, well, please, people. We didn't really think we'd reach the 50th podcast, and right now I'm thinking we probably won't. I'm, I'm thinking uh, it's going to die around here, what, 47 or so, something like that. I don't know, man. We got too many guests still to go. We can't. Uh, we can't bail on them. We're going to hit fifty, whether you like it or not. Yeah, silence. That's real great on a, a podcast. There, everybody. Good job. Well, after you brought it to a crashing halt with your, <laughs> your carnet. <laughs> What's next? We're going to slip into a little Shecky Green, maybe a little uh, <laughs> Russell. Well. Um, no, let's uh, let's 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 have so let's do some questions here. Let's do some questions. Have you ever done jury duty? I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I hated it. It was dumb, and I've I've uh, I've did lied you, to get out of it since. Did you get on the jury, or did you just spend the day there? I got on the jury. Both. I got on the jury, and then it was dismissed like by the end of the day. So I never. It, there was never an extension of it. So where you were chosen for the jury, but did you actually sit and listen to any of the case at all? No, because it, okay. it got like, I don't know, this was going back, like, this was one of the first times. They may have, they may have reached a settlement or something yeah. and then not needed to do that or whatever. Right, and you uh, got paid a, like a handsome $12 or something for the day, which didn't even cover the parking. Right, right. yeah. No, I've, I've been, I've been, uh, I've gone to jury duty maybe three or four times but um my father being a lawyer in that courthouse and now a judge in that courthouse i think uh a lot of the time they end up just skipping past me on account nice. of that um i'm still there all day but you know, I, I mean, like I was going to be there. I'd rather, I don't know, I would like to get on a jury and, you know, actually do it. But it's always a day to catch up on, you know, stuff. Or, you know, the, the, I'll, I'll say at the DuPage County Courthouse, their their area for the, the jurors is very nice and it's very open and a lot of windows and it's scenic and it's a, it's about as comfortable as you can be at a, at a jury duty situation. So, I mean, my hat is off. It's a, it's a fine courthouse. I've spent many time, much time there, not for criminal reasons, but, uh, well, I see, used to, I used to work, I used to work for my father in the summers and I would have to go and get things filed at the, at the courthouse and deliver things to judges and stuff like that. And so. See, that's the difference. So Cook County, they can send me anywhere in Cook County and, you know, and, and I, I will admit on air, I don't care. Yeah, I've thrown out the uh, the jury uh, duty notices. I've thrown them out. Yeah. What's your shoe size? <laughs> Ten and a half, uh, slightly wide. Now, do you have to make sure that it has that that width to it, or or can you kind of like just force it in there? I mean, no. Um, well, I I look for that width. I could. I mean, I could. Sometimes I wear an eleven. Sometimes I wear a a, a ten. Sometimes a straight ten and a half. Um, I used to like Nike shoes the best for my running. Um, yeah. I still probably like Nike shoes the best, but um, I, I have occasionally strayed. You feel like on... you feel like the Nikes just are shaped. Uh, the Nike shapes their shoes in a way yeah. that just fits you a little better. Yeah, I'm not necessarily saying they're any better shoes than than any of the other brands. I'm just saying for me, for what I need, they <laughs> seem to be the most uh, comfortable. I'm... Well, if you won't say it, I will. To all the people out there at Nike, I am a very big fan, and we would love to get a few pairs of Nikes for us to promote here on the show. So every everyone from uh, Nike out there who's listening, uh, we love your shoes. We love anyway, your shoes. what would be better than to have a former uh, t uh, wrestling title holder and a 25-time marathon finisher promoting their shoes? Now, when you say 25 times, I mean, like, are those all full marathons? Those are finish, full marathon finishes. 26.2 miles. Correct. And, and I had, I believe I had five that I did not finish. That's yeah, I'm not positive that's on a, that. a ridiculous amount of uh, miles to run. When was your last uh, tetanus shot? 
When was my last tetanus shot? I have no idea. Yeah, well, then you really should get that checked out because, Why? You know, well, what if you like cut yourself on something or, or whatever? I mean, like, you know, rusty nail or something like that. Uh, when was uh, when was the first time you wore a tuxedo? Uh, my sister's wedding in like 1982. And was it a black tuxedo or did they have like color to it? It, it was a, uh, a light, a medium grayish tuxedo with like not the, uh, I don't know what kind of tie you call it. Kind of like the big flat tie. Yeah. Yeah. What was the last time that you wore a tuxedo? Uh, that would, boy, that would probably be, oh, that's easy. Uh, uh, one of our former guests. No. Boy, I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, probably someone's probably, wedding, probably someone's wedding, right? Well, it's either Matt's wedding or, or yeah, it had to be Matt's wedding. Big yeah. Money's wedding. Yeah. About five years ago. Have you ever had a col- uh, colonoscopy? Yes. How was it? <laughs> it's nowhere near as bad as people make it out to be. It's certainly not enjoyable. Um, the worst part about it is the day before drinking that awful liquid and then crapping your your you know your guts out for yeah. For all you got to clear you got to clear the path. I mean, did you get to do the uh, polyphenol or whatever that that drug is that they put on you, where you're kind of like in that you know, that dream? Oh, during the thing, I was out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was um, it good? Oh, heard... Yeah, I mean, I didn't feel a thing. No, no. You well, know, the only... I, aside from not feeling it, I mean, did it? I mean, I'm not asking if the colonoscopy felt good, but I've heard that that drug in particular is is a, a kind of a fun one to to get put on. So oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I I um I went and, I, and first of all, I encourage everyone to get it first thing in the morning because then you you know it it works out best. You you you. Did not eat anything the day before. You're not starving, yeah. Yeah, and because then you get a, I get a massive headache when I'm that hungry. But anyway, um, yeah. So I had it first thing in the morning. I, I they gave me the stuff. The next thing I know, I woke up in the that little like, not a full hospital room, but like a, a mini room thing. And they said, you know, as, as soon as you, uh, as soon as you can go to the bathroom, you can leave. And so I went to the bathroom and left. Yeah. Um, I don't recall feeling especially good from the drug. I just remember, and, but I'm not sure what drug I had. Maybe are they all the same? But um, I just remember it's, like that's, being out. that 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 one is the most common. But that doesn't mean that that's necessarily what they gave you either. So it's it's possible you missed out on on a potentially fun psychedelic experience. But um, but yeah, um, I just was curious. I mean, as long as we're talking about that. Uh, do you know, uh, when was the last time you, uh, shut your pants, which you, can you remember like how, how far back are we talking here? Are we going well, years, years, days? I mean, um, there was one time during a marathon, um, near the end of the marathon when I, I had a, a an incident, it was a minor incident. Did um, just something just slip out on you and you just. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends what your definition of, of crap my pants. It like wasn't like it, it wasn't like you had been holding it and it just could, couldn't take it anymore and it just you know just no. It was kind of like it was one filled, of the earlier marathons. Them. I, yeah. I, I it was one of the early ones. I wasn't uh, in marathon shape as as I I didn't learn a lot or I learned a lot after that. Um, and I, I was kind of like weak all over and I didn't really have control over things. And uh, I, I remember vividly exactly where it was. And so how long ago are we talking here? Uh, 19, 1989, 1990-ish. So that's a good, so you've gotten a good 30-year streak without shitting your pants. That's pretty good. Yeah, I had one almost. <laughs> I, had a, I had a very close encounter. Uh, I had some uh, spicy food at a global traveler function. We had to drive back from New York to, oh boy. to Philadelphia. And I, I, uh, I did the sprint into the office to save wow. it. Yeah. Have you ever thrown up on anyone? On anyone? No. No. Now, are uh, you going to be answering these questions as well? No. I mean, I think it's only fair. I have, uh, I've got one last one, and I think we can wrap it up. Um, have you ever known a woman's touch? Uh, that's a that's a no that's a no shaking. no that's a yes I, that's I, I, silence I, that was silence and shaking you his met head one of my ex-girlfriends i that doesn't mean anything oh she didn't touch me i no you know probably or maybe she wore gloves i don't know you know i mean well that's still a woman's touch you didn't specify <laughs> but no she did not wear gloves oh well i wish but she wished she did huh 
Well, well is, this, mean, is this the beat John G up episode? No, no. I mean, you've got a you've got a whole hour and a half Q and A with me talking about Resistance Pro. I wanted to get yeah, but that was no, one no. subject of people asking questions. I was no. just moderating them. This is you just asking me random questions. These have no. And these of all all these questions have all come in from various listeners. They oh, wanted somebody to wanted know, to know my shoe size. Yeah, I mean, I look. You know, people ask strange questions. You know, it's a it's a it's a whole crazy a cold, world no, out you're there. You're young for a colonoscopy, right? Uh, yeah, but I'm I'm getting there. I know about another seven years or so, probably be due up. I mean, well, it's usually around fifty or so, right? Yeah. So, yeah, forty three. So I'm I know it'll 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 happen. I'm I'm not shy about getting a colonoscopy, but I want I want to see what's going on up there. You know, <laughs> get the video and we'll put it out. I like the video. That was cool. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. put that on the podcast if we're still I, doing I'll it. I'll gladly, I'll gladly put the <laughs> colonoscopy up on the podcast. Absolutely. I mean, if anything, you know, you could uh, film the actual procedure, and then we well, can. I don't like, want to be in the room. We can, like, you know, mix the 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 outside video with the inside video, and like, you know, cut. Back no, I'm not going to be in the room for your colonoscopy. So the, we'll have the, the weirdo the, the colonoscopy episode. Yeah, I mean. We're spreading a positive message that people should be taking preventative care. Well, they should, but I'm not going to be in there for yours. And I think we should lead by example. You've already done so by, you know, you're on your end, so to speak. Uh, But, um, you know, I I will uphold mine and uh, and, and you can aid by uh, by documenting it as you are one to uh, do in your line of work. So maybe get something, get something in get something in the patch you know oh yeah yeah or yeah, uh you know everyday sports fan you know i mean sure. just, they, yeah. They, yeah so uh well uh with that um uh, john if if, if people had nothing. Any, if people don't, even, any, don't even look me up man just ooh, if, uh, if they have any more questions i mean these is these have all come through through my uh social media but if they wanted to just go right to the source where could they find you online to ask you more questions they could either find me on they could either find me in the corner of my condo you know shaking my head crying or <laughs> they could find me anywhere on just look up john g's beats look, look up john g actually and you'll you'll find me anywhere including the or else the John G or else podcast, which may or may not appear anymore. <laughs> Where can they find you, Tommy? Uh well, John, let me tell you. Now here it comes. They let can me, find they can find me on the gram. The book. At Tommy underscore else. They can find me on the twit at Tommy underscore else. They can find the John G or else podcast Facebook page on the book. And they can find us on the tube looking for the Jaji or else YouTube channel. And, and you can find your Jaji or else podcast merchandise, t-shirts and hoodies available in the Jaji's beat store on pro wrestling tees.com. So with that, look for, look for a Thanksgiving day sale. Yeah. Uh, they run sales pretty regularly, and uh, holidays are almost a guarantee. So uh, you can save 20% on all of your John G. Or else, uh merchandise. Um, if you want to spend 20 bucks on a, on a new towel or, a, you know, a, a, you know, like a, cut something up into a do We weren't talking something. about my shirts. We were talking about no, our no, shirt. Uh, his shirts are available as well. Um, again, I would like to extend the offer to Kristen. T-shirt or weapon of mass destruction. Well, Kristen seems to be a, a lady of remarkably good taste. The murderous range. She brought up the John G's B T-shirt. I would like nothing more at this point than to to have her select that and see her wearing and proudly sponsoring, repping the John G's B brand. Yeah, but she may also want to get an objective report. You know, she would be the first person ever making judgment as to as to the question of whether you know America and its coalition uh, should have gone to war against Saddam Hussein. You know, I mean, she, minute, no, this no. could be a burning question that I'm finally going to get to have answered for her, 
or she may be able to take this mint condition unwrapped dvd get it on ebay and make a killing on it so or yeah. she could become the first person other than us to have both a john just beat t-shirt and a john grl's podcast t-shirt well we've laid out the options i will uh i will await her response and uh Kristen, feel free just to, to message me so it doesn't get lost in this clods, um, you know, adult brain and somehow get twisted into something different than what you actually want. Well, I, I, I think I, I think I know which way she's going to go on this one. So, uh, but, you know, we'll wait and find out and we'll let everyone know what she decides. So until next time for the John G. Earls podcast, I, of course, have been who else? The Tommy Ellison with me as always is the man on the beat from johnnysbeat.com, Mr. John Robleski. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs>